Greetings! In tonight's episode, we have probably one of the most important meetings of the game with the Lutesses, and we start tear hopping from multiverse to multiverse for the first time. We have a heart to heart with Elizabeth about the state of her finger, but we also identify one of the potential plot holes in Bioshock Infinite. And lastly, uh, one of the soldiers shows us how you really should use a baseball bat. This is Bioshock Infinite Explained. Greetings and uh, welcome back to Bioshock Explained Part 14 and as always there will be spoilers from the start as our goal is to explain all of the intricacies of the plotline. Now I have been very much looking forward to this part because this is the part of the game where the plotline really starts to go crazy. Up until now it has been fairly straightforward good guy, bad guy, rescue mission, girl with kind of superhuman powers-ish, um, but you know, there's nothing particularly out of ordinary so far. You know, certainly in terms of gameplay, very, very interesting, certainly in terms of uh, the style of the city, very, very beautiful, but we haven't had any of this, the kind of, the, the suspected um, Bioshock kind of twists and patterns yet, but here we are, um, ready to... Um, <laughs> ready, ready to have our minds no thoroughly, thoroughly messed with. Now, I think Mr. Lin is in number nine, um, but let's just uh, help ourselves to some gear. Or not. Or not. I think I picked it up and didn't see anything. Good. Well, let's hope that wasn't important. It's a bug. Need some help with this. I can do this, is it, isn't it? Yep. Number nine. Done. Now numbers is an interesting idea in this game. Um, is in cell number nine. I mean, everything. So many things have seemed to have a meaning that it's 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 also Lewis, possible to overthink these things. <laughs> but you can't blame me for looking after my own interests, can you? I found some now money. I know Want it? Fitzroy has come calling, but I think you'll find your business with her has come to an end. <laughs> lions walk with lions, to which. Not hyenas. Uh, one of you guys on the uh, on the on the uh, comment section was talking about numbers, and there uh, was a uh, suggesting that because the scroll, the key, and the I've forgotten the other one, the scroll key and the other thing, um, sort um, because there's three of them, could it possibly be a reference to the Holy Trinity? Because I was discussing that in a previous video. You know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Comstock, maybe the Father, um, Elizabeth, perhaps the Son, Daughter, Offspring, Holy Spirit, maybe the City. Um, it's an interesting idea. Um, certainly, I don't think there's any kind of explicit references to the, to the Trinity in the game, but then why is Chen Li in 9? You know, is, there, is there a reference there, or is it just uh, it's, it was the last door in the corridor? Um, arbitrary or meaningful um, it's hard to know with a game like this, albeit a rather gory one. All right. Have I lost the lights? Ow, ow. Aloha. Ah, there we go. He's dead. So what are we going to do? Now we need to find someone else to make those guns. No. Dead is dead, Elizabeth. Dead is dead. What? How the hell did... I see heads. And I see tails. It's all a matter of perspective. Why are you following us? Who sent you? Comstock? What do you want What do you see here, from this angle? Dead. Listen. And that angle? Alive. Walker. Chen Lin. This is becoming rough. The body's gone. It was never here. It's another Columbia. A different Columbia. The same coin. A different perspective. Heads. Tails. Dead. Alive. We have to go through to this other Columbia, but how? It's like riding a bicycle. One never really forgets. One just needs the courage to climb a board. We go into the stairs. I'll be able to bring us back. Are you sure you're ready? Mm -hmm. So, 
We've talked about tears and constants and multi-universes, but here it is in, in the flesh, if to, to, use, uh, to mix my metaphors. Um, we are in one universe, and there is another. And in this universe, Chen Lin is dead, and in that universe, he is alive. At some point in either his backstory or someone else's backstory, or at some point in that universe, there was a decision. And in our universe, it went one way. And in the universe there, it went the other. And that, that decision probably had many, many, many effects. But one effect is whether he is alive or not. The multiverse theory of constants and variables. And this, of course, the death of Chen Lin, is a variable. It is not a fixed point. It can be changed. So, we are going to walk across from one variable to another due to the abilities of Elizabeth. No blood. And no body. It's another world, Booker. Another Columbia. Something tells me one dead gunsmith ain't the only thing that's changed. So here we are. Uh, universe number two for us, but actually for Booker, this is going to be more like universe number three. Because remember, Booker didn't come from the original universe that we were in. He actually came from the universe that uh, his daughter Anna originally came from. And then we, have, um, not known to us because our memories have been somewhat rewritten, we came from, say, universe number one into universe number two, where we spent most of the game so far. And now we have moved into universe number three. Um, we talked about Abraham Lincoln um, a few videos ago and about how he has seen as uh, evil by this particular community because of his views on equality and um, emancipation of the slaves, etc, uh, etc. Et um, Elizabeth obviously as confused as Booker is at the moment, and Booker's should be ex extra confused really, because he's just crossed across into a universe where there is yet another version of him. Now there are lots and lots of things to potentially discuss with the tears and um, perhaps slight illogical steps, perhaps some things that work and some things that don't, and we will try and discuss them all um, throughout the next few videos. But there is a, there's a lot to get through and I don't want to do it all in one go. So just for now let's get used to the idea that we, <laughs> we're still in Colombia, but it's different Colombia due to some different decision made somewhere that has had a huge impact on all or, or many subsequent decisions since then. Clearly, this is a universe where the Vox uprising has started and is taking place. Uh, many of them seem to have been caught. But as we get back to the soldiers that we killed right at the end of the last video, uh, another kind of piece of the puzzle is going to be put back into it will put into place um, for us for Elizabeth. Come on, you piece of bullshit. Tell me about Daisy Cutting Loose. What? Scarfield says cutting loose. They're bringing his tools to the lockup. They'll keep him clean, I guess. Why? What are you? The Columbia Gazette? The chink's wife got friends in high places. Come on. We need to sell. So this kind of um, helps to answer the question about what is different in the universe, or, or, or potentially answers the question about what the variable was. That little bit of dialogue there says that uh, the that uh, Chun Lin's uh, very. Um, wife has friends in high places and as we go back to uh, his workshop we'll discover that in fact one of the variables here is is Chun Lin's wife is different and one of the effects of that is not only it does, does she worship a different god but she has different connections and therefore she is able to get him free however as you also heard in the dialogue that then sets up a different problem for us in that they confiscate his tools instead of killing him alive now. we're in a world where he was never murdered Somewhere we'll find out why, I suppose. We already it's found out why. Something like that. And have everything else remain the same. Fair point. And you can see all the, the Vox uh, Populi uh, decorations around here. This this wonderful red sash, uh, which is becomes their symbol throughout the game, now really starts to uh, make a focal point of the in the visuals. They were dead. Not in this world. Their noses, they're, they're all bleeding. I hate one of you. 
Who do I hate? I can't tell which one to hear. Who is the I? Which one hates which? What do we do now? So I think it's probably worth just having a little bit, a little listen to their dialogue there. That, that one guard was talking about there being two of them in there because in some way the universes have merged. Now that's not quite true. We haven't taken two universes and um, kind of merged them together. But in crossing over, uh, we have kind of briefly allowed those universes to touch. I mean, in effect, we are the crossover, um, Elizabeth and 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 Booker. And like she says, because these universes have touched, the memories that these people might have from one universe are somewhat interfering with their memories um, fr from, from this universe. So simultaneously they remember being alive and being dead, which is a theme that comes back for those characters, comes back for us, our, our nosebleeds at various points, and also comes back to um, uh, the Comstock's wife, as we will see later on, where she gets very, very confused about her situation. But uh, another uh, change here, of course, is that uh, some of the guards that we have killed are now back up and running. So let's get this little party started. Nope, that's, that's not a person. That's a that's a decoration. Yeah, ah, dear. I ain't no fool, fool. But I can't see. Oh, there he is. I have been doing a few experiments with this game um, with in terms of um, sweet effects. Um, it was because I was looking at the, the, the shadows and the lighting there, uh, which I think is really, really good in Bioshock. But I, I have... Um, I have been tweaking a little bit with a graphics injector program known as uh, Sweet Effects, which basically allows you to customise the look of the graphics to an extent. It doesn't necessarily make them better, but it, it adjusts, you know, contrasts and um, and things. I've made a, I've made quite a few videos about them if you've been following my channel for a while. Um, the, the one of the, the only one of the few issues with um, die. One of the few issues with uh, Sweet Effects is it, it makes it harder to record. In the other world. This whole business makes my head hurt. Uh, they were just making a reference to that uh, security guy that we were discussing in the previous video. The, you know, the guy that we thought looked a heck of a lot like Preston E. Downs. And potentially, of course, there is Preston E. Downs for, uh, again, or, 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 or indeed just the innocent head of security. Um, but if, if you're not sure what I'm talking about there, please watch the, the previous video when I was discussing uh, possible identities there. Um, anyway, back, back to Sweet Effects uh, very, very briefly. Um, it, it, well, I had a little tweak. I, I pushed the contrast up just a little bit further, increased the sharpness just just a little bit, and it, and it looks even nicer than it does, but um, it makes it harder to recall because you've got to use only fraps, only fraps and occasionally DX story work when you've got um, sweet effects running, but it's a bit more unstable and the file sizes get huge. Um, so for the simplicity of recording and for the ease of your viewing pleasure, I have um, turned it back off. Turned it back off. Plus because I'm doing an, uh, an hour of recording or so at the time, that will... Uh, Fill my dear little hard drive up. Hard hand cannon ammo. There we go. You hold on to this. Money! Appreciate uh, it. Did I start from down here or did I start from upstairs? I started from upstairs, but let me just double check these before we go in case they have miraculously restocked themselves. We've also picked up that code cracker. Uh, code cracking thing, which hopefully we'll be able to um, reuse, even though we've changed universes. In my, in my first playthrough, I went back straight away when I, when I picked that one up, and I haven't this time. Interestingly, are the ah look at this the uh, the the newsreel has changed in in the new universe to reflect the uh, uh, the changed circumstances. So let's steal some candy from the bag and have a little look.
Now, one of the questions about um, moving between universes could be, and um, I'm, I'm putting an awful lot of uh, of uh, suppositions and predictions together here, is if we are not the first booker to come to this particular universe, um, you know, because we've we died quite a lot, and if, if, if we're saying that every time we die another booker comes to this universe, then in theory, then Booker has died in this universe. So therefore, when we come to this universe, we should be kind of then half aware of the fact that there is a dead Booker in this universe, and our nose should be bleeding just like everyone else's, and we should be thoroughly um, confused. But we are not. So there's a few options here. I mean, maybe it's just a kind of a, a bit of a plot hole. If you've got, if you get what I'm saying, like in theory there are dead Booker. Oh, in theory there are dead Bookers in this universe. Oh, maybe we'll talk about this in just a second. But maybe, and this is going to be a big maybe, maybe those bookers don't actually count because that the bookers that have died in this universe aren't actually the bookers from this universe. The booker from this universe is Comstock and he's alive and well, or as well as a cancer-ridden aging man can be. But um, it is uh, uh, one of the theories that was suggested to you guys, uh, suggested from you guys in the comments, was that the reason why Booker is perhaps not affected by the deaths of other Bookers here is because the the, the local Booker, um, the the the, uh, the native Booker, if you like, is is fine, and perhaps that makes a difference to how this universe plays out. Um, the other thing to to discuss that uh, we will talk about later when we get to uh, when we when we transition from yet to another universe um, is well, what about Elizabeth when she changes from one Elizabeth? one universe to another um, because every time we travel there's another booker and okay it might be Comstock and when we travel again later there's there's the booker which joins the Vox if you, uh, as you played through the game I, I assume you're aware that there is going to be a another variation on booker coming along but we don't ever seem to find like a situation where we end up with more than one Elizabeth until the very end of the game so it's almost like there's a bit of a slight logical gap in the game there and again of course this is entertainment um, it is it is a story um, um, the author cannot kind of cover every single potential plot hole and that is absolutely fine but it is, it's interesting that when we jump from universe to universe to universe there's always another booker but we never get a situation where there are met, where elizabeth meets elizabeth or we find elizabeth in two different situations um and we do hear about another Elizabeth at one point, Elizabeth being taken up to a tower, but then we get there and it, that doesn't seem to be the case. But of course then we get to the very end of the game and we end up with six Elizabeths in that baptismal hall, or seven or eight, and um, that of course then counters that theory and suggests actually no, 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 there are um, Elizabeths as well. She isn't unique, because you could make the argument that because of her finger, perhaps she is a unique figure. Um, in, uh, and you cross so that you can almost merge with herself as you cross from universe to universe and, and, and therefore she, she is she's separate, a bit like the Lutesses, you know how the Lutesses don't t tend to duplicate and things like that, but um, nevertheless, um, <laughs> Booker, uh, despite the fact that Bookers have died here, Booker does not seem confused by that, but other characters do, and their noses will bleed because of it. She pointed up there. I, th I assume there must be some sort of reference to a new head of security somewhere, but I, don't, I didn't see it. Right. Well, on the other hand, though, what I do see is the code for our little clock over here, which luckily is still here in this universe. So, huzzah! Right, we'll get to coding. The broken clock tolls at midnight. Which clock? It's this like the one. Set it to midnight. Okay. Allow me. So we've got a volley gun, we've got lock picks, we've got an infusion, and we'll keep working on our shield. We've got already. the hand of the prophet and a vox phone. Let's have a listen to 
Vivian Monroe once more. I came more. to Columbia because I believed in God and because I believed in honor. But Slade has shown me this. There is no God in shutting our brothers out from the family of man. And there is no honor in defending those who are strangers to its meaning. Perhaps in Finkton there is one more deserving of my service. And there, so we are continuing the, uh, the, the the monologue of her kind of life and change there. She's going, the implication there, going off to serve Daisy and become a member of the rebellion herself. It is entirely possible, indeed probable, that some of these characters may be fleshed out more in the upcoming DLCs. I cannot wait for them. And uh, if, and if you guys have got any predictions for the DLC, I'd love to hear it. There's been tons of theories around the place about you know, which characters will be there. Will, will any of the characters be in there? Will it even be in the same locations? Will, it, uh, will there be Booker? Will there be Anna? Will there be Elizabeth? Um, I think they, the games no company machines. have said... No tools. Let's go find that gunsmith. Yeah, Let's go upstairs now. Maybe. Uh, I think they have said that this, the, the kind of character arc of uh, Booker and Elizabeth, of course, are complete. And I would agree. I mean, you can't, you can't really go much further than where we get to in this game with them. But that doesn't mean they can't be there. It doesn't mean we can't see them in a distance. It could almost be almost like, um, you know, in Back to the Future 2, where he, uh, where, 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 where Michael J. Fox is, um... The shrine. I'll finish my thought before I go up the stairs. <laughs> where, where, in my, in Back to the Future 2, where, where, where Mark, Michael J. Fox ends up looking at himself, completing another action while being there at a different time. I mean, it, it is possible, of course, that the DLC will include us running around, but we're having the player play as someone else. Um, you know, or, uh, another possibility rather than uh, Booker Mark 27 or 129, whatever it was we were up to. So here's the variation in Chun Lin. This is the uh, like we were talking about before: new wife, therefore new religion, therefore new statues here, therefore Chun Lin is still alive. Um, but the poor guy is a little bit confused because he's dead or half dead or dead somewhere else, and he's going to have a nice, attractive-looking nose. There it is. Mmm, -mm, tasty. Um, and sadly, he's working the machines that are no longer here because the machines um, are still here in the other universe, but they're not in this one. So he's thoroughly Chen mixed Lin. up. Chen Lin. Excuse me, Chen Lin. Plus, he's you green. Speak up. speak up! Can't hear you over all these machines. Very loud. I'm Booker DeWitt. Stand back. These machines very dangerous. Wait downstairs with Mrs. Lin. Uh, Daisy Fitzroy sent us. We need to talk to you about getting some weapons. Machines! Very dangerous! No place for stupid people! Want to lose pretty head? Mr. Lin... Downstairs! What is wrong with him? Remember him dead in that cell? Maybe in, in some way he remembers that too. How would you reconcile that? I don't know. Um, I'm normally very, very complimentary about this game, and I think the game is excellent and stuff, but, um, and the voice acting is brilliant. Booker, Comstock, um, Anna Elizabeth, very, very good, but Chun Lin's voice, um, to me it sounds like an American doing an impression of someone that's Chinese. I don't know, I don't know about you, but if you just rewind those lines and have a listen again, it sounds to me like he's going in and out of accent. I mean, it could I mean, it, it might actually be voiced by someone who is, you know, uh, part Chinese, I don't know, but it, it's, um, it's dodgy to me. Bring Chen Lin back to me. So perhaps a constant is that the, whoever his wife is, wife is, ends up standing here, um, all mucked, all uh, mucked up and concerned for her husband, but for a different reason. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm looking for Mrs. Lin. I Mrs. Lin. No, I, I mean a little Chinese lady. She was Booker. This is Mrs. Lin. They took Chen's tools. What's he got without his tools? Well, your husband is a bit out of sorts. If he could work again, maybe if, if he could work, he'd... Mrs. Lin, can you tell me who took your husband's tools? Goddamn police. They took them and locked them up in the impound in Shantytown. She... Would having his tools back fix his mind? Who cares? We're not getting any guns if Chen Lin doesn't have his tools. Let's head to Shantytown. And so the plot line continues. Of course, we never do get these tools. We never do complete the mission for Daisy. Bloody nose. Seems to be in style. This Tara. I'm not so sure it was a good idea. Mm. 
Well, it could be argued that in fact all of the problems here are uh, ultimately caused by the creation of the tears, albeit from... Oh, am I getting attacked from somewhere? Music suggests so. <laughs> Hello. I would actually just like to uh, take the opportunity to thank the band uh, that clearly kind of sits around me at all times to warn me when there are enemies around by, 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 by putting together a lovely rousing tune when I'm being shot and then quietly right down uh, when, when, everything, when everything is fine and dandy. I think that that band has in fact saved my life and yours on numerous um, occasions and yet they never appear um, you know, in the credits or as a playable character. Um, but again, maybe, maybe in the DLC, you know, play as the band. War, the adipose. Apologies for my memory, but I might. Do I need to pop into the factory here, or do I never pop into the factory? Just check their personal belongings before we go. No, it looks like we're not going there, so we must be going over into the shanty town. Now, um, this is obviously a part of the game where it's very noticeable that Comstock is not around. Um, it, we do feel that we spend a lot of this game, aside from the beginning, kind of getting back to Comstock. Um, the whole segue where Elizabeth brings us over here and uh, with the Rebellion, and to an extent even with um, Slate, uh, is us always trying to get to Comstock. But we do feel quite distant at the moment, and as, as Comstock and Booker are two very, very... Are, are the most important characters in the game, or important character, I should say. Um, it, it is a shame that he, he becomes so invisible um, at this particular point. But um, that said, the characters of Fink and, and others are, are done very, very well as well. I'll just pick up our, pick up our ammo there. And we should pull our little lever. Oh, what? My finger. Uh, sorry, I didn't... It's all right. It's as much a mystery to me as anyone else. Maybe Songbird knows, but he's not talking. <laughs> I'm sorry. What for? I get to wear this stylish thimble to cover up my hideous deformity. I hear they're all the rage in Paris. And, of course, there's loads of things to ask about that. Firstly, when we're having a life-or-death situation to find some weapons to stop a rebellion to save millions of people's lives, why do you think that I'm interested in your finger? Question one. Question number two is, uh, or point number two to make, is the fact that Booker is well aware of what, what happened to her finger. He just doesn't remember. In fact, he knows more than, more than she does um, uh, what is going on with it. Thirdly, the whole idea about her powers coming from the fact that her half of her finger was left in an alternate in the universe, which which is which is the end reveal. You know, she is special because she actually exists in two dimensions. To an extent, is actually fairly flawed because if you think about it, um, human beings are always leaving bits of themselves lying around. You know, we we shed skin cells constantly. There's probably tons in your bed. There's probably tons in the chair you're sitting on right now. Um, without getting too kind of um, icky, if we talk about you know defecation, urination, and all that kind of stuff, you know, we're, we're leaving bits of ourselves there. What about um, sperm, semen, ovaries, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, and if well, someone was to shed any of that kind of stuff, or even, you know, fingernails, and then travel into another universe, the argument could be made that that person then exists in two universes, just like um, Anna slash Elizabeth does. So, um, she isn't perhaps unique in only have in in shedding bits of herself. So, however, she is, of course, unique in terms of the plotline of, of having these powers. However, I do understand that as a plot device, that's the idea, and perhaps there, perhaps there are times just to accept accept the plot and kind of go, fine, that, that's how it's set up. But it, um, it's a, an interesting idea to think that um, Booker exists in multiple universes uh, as well for that very reason. Right, let's... Uh, how should we deal with this one, then? Who's the most powerful guy around here? Probably Rocket Launcher guy, so let's... 
Let's see if we can get the party started without us getting involved in it. No. Turns out he doesn't want to get involved at all. Go ahead. And go. a gun. And once again, the band getting involved and reminding everyone that it is, in fact, time to fight. Um, I haven't put out a Bioshock video uh, explained uh, this week, um, because I've been pretty busy going no! through all okay. the old annotations on my videos going up to about eight months ago. Um, I've been trying to edit in, th edit in things like... Um, uh, abilities for users to skip ahead and skip backwards where appropriate to move forward to the next video and to stay, uh, you know, to find the previous videos and to, to link between playlists and, and things like that. First of all, to help the user, but secondly, um, to help the, uh, the the channel itself kind of um, pe people to find the other things I've done. So um, if you do have any opinions on the annotations, whether you think um, that they're done well, done badly, could be changed, could be improved, um, I'm, uh, I'm uh, open to feedback. Um, uh, but I, 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 do, I do want, and, and obviously I'll try to put them away where people can kind of can X them off um, if, if, if they don't want them, because I, I, don't, I don't want to annoy people with annotations. I know people can overdo it, but um, I think a simple thing saying next video, previous video is probably um, okay. But let me know. Okay, and as we approach a brand new building, I think this is going to be a perfect time for us to wrap up part 14 of Bioshock Explained. Um, if you've got some comments on what we've talked about today, love to hear them, love to respond to them, love to interact. Um, I do read all of them and I'm, I'm going to use uh, as many of them as possible in future videos. So if you've got any thoughts about anything we've discussed, stick it down there. Please give the video a like if you've enjoyed it as it helps the channel to grow. And of course, if you're not yet a subscriber, please do subscribe and um, I would love to have you um, part of the uh, part of the adipose community on a regular basis take care thanks for watching and i'll see you soon bye bye